Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Dr. Mandel here with you. We are streaming live here uh, worldwide via the web. Uh, today's topic is the suboccipital uh, reflexology. We're dealing with the connection of the suboccipital muscles to the eyes. I'm going to show you something quite fascinating. I think you're really going to enjoy this program. I need to teach you some anatomy, some uh, very important things. Uh, that will really kind of put this together. This is quite complex, but this is uh, some major breakthrough. I've done, been doing a lot of clinical studies and research to try to pull out the gap of people who have chronic headaches, neck pain, even visual problems, dizziness, even tinnitus, ringing the ears, uh, vertigo. Uh, there is a, a major connection to the suboccipital muscles that affect our eyes. Let's get right into it because I got a, a lot to cover and I'm going to try to move this through this as quick as I can. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, let's move on a little bit. Uh, I just briefly want uh, to put my disclaimer up there just to let you know that if you are having significant problems, I always recommend you should always follow up with a doctor. Uh, this is an educational program, hopefully, that if you decide to put it to use and uh, it may do miracles for you, I believe it's a very safe procedure. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, these particular uh, conditions when it comes down to the suboccipital region. This is the area that we're going to concentrate. I'm going to review the muscles with you. Realize that uh, the millions of people uh, dealing with let me grab it here. The old phone, looking down like this, this looks familiar. In this position, driving, sitting, reading, writing. In our bed, propped up with our head, head being 12 pounds, all the extra force being put in the suboccipital area. Forward head posture, a major epidemic. I'm telling you, five years early, you're going to watch that this most serious epidemic in the world, it's not going to be heart disease or cancer. It's going to be forward head posture. And that's my prediction because of technology. So we are wondering why we're experiencing headaches, visual problems, uh, vertigo, uh, kind of giddiness, um, affect our eyes, affect the light into our eyes, affect our concentration. I am going to show you something that's going to blow you away. And I really mean that sincerely. Uh, let's go ahead and move forward, realize that uh, these muscles that we're talking about right here, uh, we have four main muscles on both sides of our uh, suboccipital muscles. Let me go to this one just to give you an idea. Uh, this is where it's broken down into uh, two of the rectus capitis posterior minor, rectus capitis posterior major, uh, obliquus capitis superior, obliquus capitis inferior, the suboccipital muscles. You can see that's the atlas, the first vertebrae, the second vertebrae down to the axis, the attached to those vertebrae on the transverse process as well as the spinous process. Don't worry about that. What we're going to concentrate on is I want to come back to this picture here. You can get a little understanding and I'll show you how the nerves correlate, but realize a couple important things I want to I want you to understand. Uh, the suboccipital muscles contain an unusually loud amount of proprioceptive uh, muscle spindles. Proprioception is how the brain interprets parts of the body. There's 36 spindles per gram of the muscle's uh, tissue, whereas the example of, a, of the gluteus maximus, which is the large muscle in the buttocks, only has one spindle per gram. So you can see the importance that the proprioceptors, how they measure tension in the muscles. It tells the brain about the position of the, where the head is in the neck, in the neck. And the information is, is extremely crucial in order to coordinate all these muscles of the body in keeping balance. So you can just see the intricacy, uh, how intricate this is and how specific this is. Uh, this is really detailed that there are so many neurological things. The brainstem comes down to the second vertebrae. Um, and as we move here, uh, this just shows you a little bit of the anatomy. This is kind of a cool view. I really love this view right here. But it just shows you got four suboccipital muscles on each side of the back of the skull, all right? And those are the muscles that we're going to really tune in. And uh, while, while we do this, let's first do a, a little exercise. We'll come back to it. But I want you to 
feel the back of your skull right now. Come on, do it with me together. Sitting up. Take these, take your thumbs, put it underneath the back of the skull. Let me turn around so I can show you. Okay, here's the back of my skull right below it. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to, don't watch my eyes. I want you to see my eyes going back and forth like this. You can move them up and down, back and forth, but you're going to feel it more going back and forth. I want you to move your eyes back and forth, left and right. Close your eyes and push in hard and firm. Move your eyes back and forth. Keep doing it. You're going to feel those muscles move. Go back and forth. Close your eyes. Back and forth. Move your eyes back and forth. You felt those muscles move when you move your eyes. That's extremely serious medical research. All right. When you move your eyes back and forth, those muscles, those suboccipital muscles, they contract. So we know the direct relationship between the suboccipital muscles and the eyes. That's serious. When I say amazing, because why do people experience headaches up here? Why do they get dizziness up here? How come they get vertigo up here? How come they get maybe nystagmus where the eyes kind of go back and forth? This has so much an effect with the eyes. I'm going to come back to that. So let me just go keep continue to move. This is really great stuff. You can look at the occipital nerves, those nerves underneath the back of the skull Remember, forward head posture causes these occipital muscles to contract. Remember, look at my head in forward head posture. If I just keep it the way it is, I'm looking down. And the only way that you're going to look up is those occipital muscles have to contract. Watch. Squeeze. Squeeze. Well, guess what? They're always staying contracted. Otherwise, you continue to look down at the ground. So as a result of that, we're having a connection of inflammation of the suboccipital nerves that go over the head behind the eyes. Headaches, problems up here. Most headaches are tension related from the suboccipital back behind the eyes. It's not your eyes. It's the muscles back here from the communication of what's happening here to here. So if we look at the next picture here, we can see a little more detail. I'm not going to spend much time, but you can see it's very complex with those nerves. By the way, the C1, C2 nerves affect that whole area, the suboccipital area. As we come up further here, we can see a little more complexity of the greater occipital nerve. Now, here is some real amazing research I want to share with you right here. This is called the myodural bridge, MDB. The myodural bridge, all right? Basically, what this is, this is the outermost uh, connection where... These muscles, these fascia strands connecting from these suboccipital muscles, they attach to the outermost membrane surrounding the brain and spinal cord, which is the spinal cord here. But those, the dural, the dura mater is the outside covering of the, of the, uh, the sac around the spinal cord. And inside that, those meninges is cerebral spinal fluid. Now, uh, let me move over here. So in other words, those muscles attach to the outside covering of the, the meninges. The meninges cover the brain and the spinal cord. And now the fascia and the muscles connecting from the suboccipital muscles, connecting to that outside of the meninges, the dura mater, is pulling. It's pulling. It's contracting. This, inf this cerebral spinal fluid circulates around your brain and spinal cords continuously. Once it stops, you're in trouble. If you got tugging and pulling, you bet you're going through neurological conditions. Most doctors, most therapists do not know this. I can promise you. This is where people take MRIs, give you medication, and you're not getting better. I'm going to show you a little technique in just a second that hopefully can change your life. This is a safe technique, and I really hope it will change your life because that's my goal, is to see people's life change, to see you feel better, to see the vertigo, the headaches, the neck pain, whatever you're having, you're having that the miracle of your body can heal. That's my, that's my excitement. That's why I'm here with you. So this is the Dura Mata here. If you look at the that little uh, skull up on top of the right, that just shows you we're just kind of taking a little picture from that, the top of the skull here, then below it is the periosteum, then you have the skull, then you have the dura mater. 
and then you look at the under the dura mater, you have the subarach, you have the arachnoid and the pia mater underneath there. But you can see it covers the brain. Those are the layers of the brain. So imagine those muscles, the suboccipital muscles, pulling on that dura mater. It's pulling, it's tugging. And when it tugs, you bet you've got serious neurological involvement in there. Neurologists, neurosurgeons don't know the significance of how many different symptoms you can get from this, but I'm telling you there is a connection, which is quite exciting because hopefully we're going to do something with that correction or that connection to help the correction. All right, so uh, that's what I wanted to share with you. So let me go back and bring up my little favorite picture here. <clears throat> hopefully this will be a blessing for all of us. Here we go. This is what I want to do with you. Very simple. Remember, uh, when our eyes move, it tugs on these suboccipital muscles. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an, a suboccipital stretch to stretch the muscles in a suboccipital region. And by doing that, uh, what we'll do is we'll kind of grab our, grasp our hands like this behind our head. Okay, let me turn around. Okay, so we're kind of like right above the the crease below the back of the skull. And this is basically what we're going to do. We're going to put our chin down to our chest and we're just going to pull forward. Okay, so as we pull forward, we're stretching those suboccipital muscles. But here is the ticket. What I need you to do is I need you to look down, straight down, like you're looking at the ground. You're going to close your eyes. You're going to look down when you pull forward. When you come back up, you're going to look up. And you're going to do about 10 of those. So this is what it's going to look like. Look at me. All right. I'm going to grab here. All right. I'm going to leave my eyes open so you can just see what I'm doing. I may look a little funny, but I'm going to leave my eyes open. So as I come down with my chin, I continue to push down, but I, bring, I look down, look straight down like this. Hold it three seconds. As I come up, I want to look up like this. As I come down, I want to look down as I keep pulling as I come up, I want to look back, look straight up. Okay, so as you put your chin to your chest, as you push down, you're going to feel a burning underneath the skull. As you push down, look down, close your eyes, look down, because I want these muscles to isolate and traction on the suboccipital muscles. And as you come all the way back again, I want you to look up. You'll do 10, 10 sets of those, uh, uh, hold it down for like three seconds. And within less than a minute, you may say, wow, holy moly, I feel light, my head feels light, my clarity is zero, my headache's gone. I, I'll make you promises. This is not going to work for everyone, but it's going to work for many, many, many people. Okay, so I wanted to share this technique. I really hope you'll see blessings and miracles because it works. If your condition is related to this condition, uh, there's no harm here. Uh, if it's related to this and you get a neurological change from that particular stretch, uh, you just may be a very happy person. And I really hope it happens to everyone out there. So anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is really a special video because this is really nice research and you're not going to hear this stuff on the Internet. Uh, I really ask you truly, if you can share this I would really appreciate it. Use it on your social media. I ask you to subscribe if you haven't. Hundreds of self-help videos I have, as well as cutting-edge nutrition. Leave me a big like if you don't mind. And again, if you have not uh, come out to my channel over on Facebook, Motivational Doc, Motivational Doc on Facebook. Give me a heads up there, hands up, whoever you want to do it. Uh, just many blessings to you, your family, your loved ones. And I really hope uh, you continue to see blessings in your health. Stay proactive, keep up the great work, and we, you know we'll be back real soon. Bye-bye now.